Happy Easter. We are so excited to be with each and every one of you today. We have waited for this day for many, many months to celebrate with you right now, right in your home. So whoever you're with, wherever you are, get ready to celebrate the risen King, Jesus. In just a few moments, Pastor Brad is gonna lead us through communion. So do whatever you gotta do right now to get ready. Go grab your supplies, bring those back to wherever you're watching at. He's gonna walk us through those elements in just a few minutes. If you're brand new with us, or if you've been with us for the past few weeks online, welcome back to The Grove Online. We have a place on our homepage, thegrovechurchfl.org, that we want you to go to right now and just connect with us. If you go to the homepage and scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's a contact now button, click that. Let us know how we can pray for you. Let us know what you need or just give us your information. We wanna call in and check on you. And again, if you're a first timer, please do this for us right now. We have a special gift that we would like to send for you. So wherever we are, whoever we're with, I wanna invite the presence of God right now into our homes. So if you would, please pray with me. Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much that we get to gather all across the land in our own comforts of our own homes. God, may you meet us where we are right now. Thank you so much for the power of the resurrection, which gives us life. May we celebrate that well today. May we honor you. May we worship you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hey, Grove Church, I hope you enjoy the service. surrounding me let it break at your name and still call the sea to still the rage in me to still every way at your name from the start we were created for perfection we are the order brought out of chaos dust from the ground shaped with life from the creator but from the start we went our own way rejected and dismayed we keep trying to get back to the life that he made so we search for a savior his science and business and changing behavior till we get exhausted there's no way we can save us because our god has a plan and he'll use our mistakes to shake the foundation of the world he created and it happens in waves it's his mercy, our failure, his patience, our failure, his greatness, our failure. But his love isn't shaking, it's erasing our failure. And his plan was a man who would die and he'd save us. But he made himself low, so low that we missed him. But he came to our mess and lifted us rebels. No man can rise to his level. For there is but one who causes the darkness to tremble. Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, your silence fear. And Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus came as a kid, perfectly reflecting his father. He grew, he healed, he fed, and he taught us, turning tables on what we thought we knew about who God is. His name is a light, cause this ain't a fight. This is surrender. This is a coup, a prayer, a decision. This is erasing a million wrong decisions. This is what it means to be Christian. This is why today we're forgiven. But he came and we missed him. He didn't fit our description. We wanted a different kind of king, so he called and we did it. Answer, advancing our human tradition, taking matters in our own hands, canceling wisdom, but Jesus wouldn't let us go. We were his mission, and he would fall for us so we could rise with him. cross is blinded, a violent reminder. He was destroyed, forsaken, expired. 
Then darkness extended as far as our eyes could see But that darkness was not meant to be His name is a light and his light set us free And on day number three our victory landed Our sins defeated and our hope handed to us like king stars in his hands for a king, king of the dark, king of the light, king of death, king of life, king of all.
sing this out, church. My weapon is a man. 
everyone. Thanks for joining us here at the Grove News Network, where we share positive news that's happening locally and nationally. I'm Jason, and I'm Dustin Sams, and I'm glad you're with us for this first time and maybe our last episode, because we may have never done this before, and we actually have no idea what we're doing, which is interesting because we've seen a huge surge in our online viewing, which is also interesting because most of our team have faces for radio. While the coronavirus has created many headlines, it's also caused many people to do many good, creative, and interestingly weird things. That's right. This week, we've also learned about Tiger King and that guy, Carol Baskin. We don't know anything about that either, but we are sure enjoying the memes. Speaking of memes, it seems that social distancing is the new phrase and trend for 2020. In fact, here's a remastered version of Da Vinci's The Last Supper to fit the current times. <laughs> Great job defacing that sacred masterpiece. In other related news, some commodities are hard to find. And if you have them, it puts you in a unique bargaining situation, like this guy. He's paying his bills with toilet paper, which reminds me of a joke. What does toilet paper and Star Trek have in common? The past several weeks have definitely created unique challenges. Teachers, for example, have gone completely virtual, teaching both students and parents from home, sending encouraging messages and videos to their students. In fact, here's an awesome video of Park Avenue Christian Academy's teachers and staff sending their students home with their materials. Also, in an effort to channel his sanity and bring some humor to the current student-teacher situation, our own Andy Hansen wrote an original parody to Sublime's What I Got. Early in the morning, I open my laptop, I log into my launch pad, and then click on Google Docs. Flexibility is essential, think outside the box too. I am learning new technology along with you. Well, good for them, and good for Andy Hansen. You know, I'm often mistaken as his out-of-shape older brother. Parents are doing all kinds of things, and they've decided to do every virtual thing to keep their kids entertained. Anything from tossing a paper ball and trampoline exercises. Lift one leg up, and as it tires, alternate legs. And in an effort to show their musical skills, this dad is using virtually every door in the kitchen. Let me just take a moment to answer the age-old question, Jason, that moms and dads are asking themselves, is it only my kids that act this way? Yes, it's only your kids that act that way. Lastly, we want to leave you with some uplifting news headlines. Hearing that a young girl would be missing out on her birthday celebration, the Titusville Fire Department showed up and sang her happy birthday from their fire engine. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Lee. And with that, we want to say thank you to all of our first responders, healthcare, and grocery store workers who are stepping up and stepping in, making sure our community is cared for and protected. That's right. And here's to you for tuning in to the Grove News Network. Now, over to Pastor Brad, who really has a great good news message. And unlike my friend here, Jason, is actually wearing pants. Stay classy, Titusville. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks for sharing that good news and happy Easter to all of you. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us as our online Easter worship experience. You know, Easter is uh, like never before this year and it's different for all of us, but I'm going to ask you to believe something we're believing. We're believing that God's going to do something extra special, that we're going to have the largest Easter we've ever had as a Grove Church and not just in online views, uh, but in individuals responding to the message of hope and love and forgiveness found in the person of Jesus. Would you believe that with us? 
My name is Brad. My name is Brad. I'm the lead pastor here at the Grove Church, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. If this is your first time tuning in uh, to one of our services, would you just please go to our website and the homepage and scroll to the bottom and let us know that this is your first time. We would like to send you a gift this week thanking you for joining us. You know, Easter is all about celebrating the empty tomb. It's kind of strange celebrating emptiness. You know, we don't celebrate empty gas tanks or empty bank accounts or empty food pantries. But you know what's even worse than empty bank accounts or empty gas tanks is empty promises. And we live in a culture that's full of empty promises, constantly trying to sell us on things like this, that if you would wear this cologne, women are going to flock to you. If you'll drive this car, you'll be successful. Or if you drink this drink, you're going to have the body of a God. If you invest in my company, you'll never have to work again. And we fall for these empty promises. We find ourselves coming up empty time and time again. But I want to celebrate Easter and the resurrection story today and look at how the resurrection story and the empty tomb is filled with promises. You know, I want to spend a few moments looking at the promises that Jesus makes to us in his death and his burial and his resurrection. Jesus suffered a brutal death. He died a criminal's death. The cross was much like the electric chair is to us today. Jesus hanging on the cross between two criminals and he shouts out these words. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And in that moment of history, all of the the weight of the world's sin was shifted to the person of Jesus. And for the first time in existence, Jesus felt separation from God the Father. And the reason why is that God's a holy God and he can have nothing to do, no interaction with sin. So from the first time in all of existence, God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son were separated. And just moments later, Jesus said another phrase and he said these three words. He says, it is finished. And those three words mean something different to different crowds of people. You see, to the believers and the disciples, the followers of Jesus, it meant this moment of hopelessness and defeat that everything they've put their trust and faith in is gone and their leader is dead. But to the religious leaders and the authorities, it meant finally this troublemaking deceiver is dead and we can get back to life as normal. But to the believer today, to each of us who know the whole story, we find our hope in these three words. It is finished. Our sin has been paid for, it's been dealt with once and for all. Jesus did it, it is done. The empty cross promises us forgiveness of sins. In in 1 John chapter 2, it says that when we sin, we have an advocate who stands on our behalf. That the righteous one, he's the atoning sacrifice for our sins. His name is Jesus. He paid the price for our sins and not only our sins, but the sins of the entire world. You know, Jesus became our substitute. He willingly and joyfully took our place on the cross. We all owed a debt that we could not pay and Jesus paid a debt that he did not owe. He willingly came the payment for our death. He was the atoning sacrifice, the only acceptable form of payment. You know, God took the the most violent act in all of history and brought about the greatest hope for all humanity. And really this is what we remember and celebrate every time uh, as a body, as a church, we, we celebrate communion. You see, communion is remembering the great act of Christ on the cross, paying the price for our sins. As his body was broken and beaten in that brutal form of death, and then as his blood was shed to cover the sins of the entire world. And so what we want to do right now is we remember the promises of the cross, the promise of forgiveness is we want to celebrate communion together. So hopefully you have your supplies with you, but, but this, this bread or this cracker represents the body of Christ that was broken on our behalf. And, and we want to eat this in remembrance, remembering today of that grateful act that Jesus willingly and joyfully went to the cross on our behalf. We eat this in remembrance of him. This cup represents the blood of Christ that was shed on our behalf. Just as I just read in in, in 1 John chapter 2, that we have one who stands in our defense, the righteous one, Jesus Christ, who paid the price for our sins and not only our sins, but the sins of the entire world. We drink this cup in remembrance of Christ. So grateful for the promise of the empty cross, the promise of forgiveness, that it is finished, that our sins have been paid for once and for all. 
Would you take a couple moments right now and whoever you're watching this message with, uh, would you discuss these questions? And I'm so glad the cross is not the end of the story. You know, Jesus' body was taken off that cross and placed in a, a borrowed tomb. This was a prophecy that was fulfilled through the life of Jesus that was prophesied over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago that the Messiah would be buried in a rich man's tomb. You know, not only does this fulfill prophecy, but I think it was a borrowed tomb because he wasn't going to be needing it too long. But look with me what happened early on that Sunday morning in, in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 28. It says, after the Sabbath at dawn on the day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. You see, the stone was rolled back, not so that Jesus could get out, but the stone was rolled back so that we could see in. For the rest of time, any skeptics uh, uh, not believing the resurrected Lord, they could look into this empty tomb and see that, that Jesus is not there. He is risen just as he said. I want you to hear this promise that the empty tomb promises us life everlasting. He did it. He conquered death just as he said. There, there's a story where Jesus is talking. He says, man, as Jonah spent three days in the belly of a fish, so will the son of man spend three days in the heart of the earth. Another time he says, man, you can destroy this temple, but in three days I'll rebuild it. 
And then he tells his disciples that the son of man is going to be arrested and crucified. But on the third day, he will rise again. Jesus predicted his own death, his own burial and his own resurrection. And he actually did it. He did it. He conquered death. The promise of the resurrection is not only that Christ was resurrected, but that we too will be resurrected. In John chapter 11, we read where Jesus is at the tomb of his friend named Lazarus. He's talking to Lazarus' sister, Martha. And he says these words. He says in John 11, verse 25 and 26, that I am the resurrection and the life and the one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me, in me will never die. Do you believe this? Jesus is telling us that, that the power of the empty tomb, the resurrection is, is true for us as well. That those who faith, place our faith and belief in the person of Jesus, we too will have everlasting life. Death died the day Christ rose. Eternity is reality. When Jesus makes a promise, we can take it to the bank. It's certain and it's for sure. You see, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came to give us life and life abundantly. The promise of the empty cross is the forgiveness of sins, but the promise of the empty tomb is life everlasting. Hey, why don't you take these next few moments and whoever you're watching this with discuss these questions. And I hope the promises of the empty cross and the empty tomb are causing you to overflow with hope and with joy. I want to look at one last promise of the resurrection in John chapter 20, verse three through eight. 
where it reads that they were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. And then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. And then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and saw and believed. This is an incredible story of the disciples running to the empty tomb, finding only the, the burial cloth there. No Jesus because he had risen. As they see the, the linens there to the side, but the, the linen that was covering Jesus' face was folded and, and set to the side. I think this is incredible. Like I, I can't hardly get my kids to fold their laundry in their bedroom, but Jesus went to the cross, died for our sins and overcoming death in the grave. And the first thing he does is fold his clothes. But you know, there's an old Jewish tradition uh, that the servant would fold the napkin at the master's table. And when the master got up from, from eating, if he were to walk away and crumble the napkin at the table, it meant that, that he was done to go ahead and clear the table. But if the master folded the napkin, it meant that not to mess with anything because he wasn't done, but he was coming back. And so many will teach that, that Jesus folded this, this napkin or this linen cloth to represent that he wasn't done. Jesus was coming back. The tomb was empty. The burial clothes were empty because Jesus was alive. You see, the promise of the cross is the promise of forgiveness of sins. The promise of the empty tomb is the, the promise of life everlasting. And the promise of the empty burial cloth is that we have a living Savior, that Jesus Christ is alive, overcoming death, overcoming the grave, resurrecting from the dead. This sets Christianity apart from all other religions, that our Messiah lives, that we can be confident in these promises and in the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus that brings us life and life everlasting. In John chapter 14, uh, we see a conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples. And he's telling them to not be troubled, to not, not worry because he's going to the Father and he's preparing a place for them, but he's gonna come back to get them. And he says, man, if it weren't so, I wouldn't have told you that there's a room for you in my father's house. You know where I'm going and you will meet me there. And one of his disciples says, man, well, Jesus, how in the world are we supposed to know where you're going? They're not understanding what he's trying to, to say to them. And he says, you know the way to the place where I'm going. I am the way and the truth and the life and no one comes to the father except through me. Jesus is clearly telling them that, you know what, one day, because of the promise of that empty tomb and the empty cross, we too will spend eternity in the presence of God in heaven. Jesus is the way, he's the truth and the life to the Father. There's no other way, there's no other route. And I just wanna share this truth with you this morning as we wrap up our time together. That there's a God in heaven that's so crazy about you. There's a God that loves you just as you are. There's a God, he's not mad at you, but he's mad about you. And he desires nothing more than to be in relationship with you. But as I said earlier, this holy God can have nothing to do with sin. He can have no interaction with sin. And so each of us have fallen short and we've sinned against God. Therefore, we can't be in relationship with him, but because of God's great love and God's great mercy and God's plan for each and every one of us. He sent his only son, Jesus, from heaven to earth to live and to die on our behalf. He became our substitute. He paid the price for our sins. And the Bible tells us, man, that if we, if we would confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God rose him from the grave, then we would experience the gift of forgiveness and salvation. We too could experience this promise of an eternal home. I want you to hear these words that what we have to do is we have to realize that, that we've all sinned and we've all fallen short. We have to, to, to realize that we've missed the mark, that, that none of us are, are righteous, that none of us are good in and of ourselves, that we're all equal sinners, equally in need of a savior. And that savior's name is Jesus. When we realize that, we, 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 we can recognize that Jesus is the only solution to our sin. We place our faith and our trust in the person and the works of Jesus and his death and his burial and his resurrection. And then we repent of our sins and we say, God, I, I, I don't want to continue in this journey. I want to turn away from my sins and turn towards you. 
This is what it means to, to, to repent and call on the name of Jesus. And so this, this Easter morning, man, I'm believing that God's doing something bigger than we've ever seen before in the life of the Grove Church. That dozens and dozens and dozens of men and women and young people are, are going to respond to this message of love and forgiveness that's made available through this empty cross and this empty tomb, through the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. I mean, if you're here right now, if you're in your homes, wherever you're at, and, and you recognize your need for a savior, maybe you realize for the very first time that I've sinned, that I've sinned against God, that I've fallen short. I'm in need of a savior. I'm in need of this forgiveness. I'm going to say a short prayer right now. And I, I'm just going to ask you right where you're sitting. Maybe you can pray this prayer along with me. It goes something like this. God, I recognize that I'm a sinner, that I've fallen short, that I've missed the mark. And I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus is who he says he is. That Jesus left heaven and came to earth. That he died on my place on that cross. He paid my debt of sin. And I confess him now as Lord and Savior of my life. Lord, I surrender my life to you. From this day forward, I want to live for your purposes and your plans that you have for me. In Jesus' name, Amen. I mean, if you prayed that prayer, I, I really would like to ask you to go to this link, this link right below me right here, the grovechurchfl.org forward slash no God. If you'd go to that website, if you'd go to that link and let us know that you prayed this prayer today for the first time, that you made a decision to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we want to follow up with you. We want to help you. We want to give you the tools you need to begin this new journey with Jesus. Hey, thank you so much for celebrating this Easter worship experience with us. Let's continue to worship now. There was a moment when the lights went out And death had claimed the victory The king of love had given up his life the darkest day in history There on a cross they made for sinners For every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known for the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What sacrifice was made As the heavens rolled
Hey, thanks for tuning in today with the Grove Church online. We hope you enjoyed the Easter service. And if you just prayed that prayer, we want to pray with you and we want to celebrate you. So right now, go to thegrovechurchfl.org forward slash no God, K-N-O-W. Fill that form out. We want to get with you as soon as we can. Everyone else, thank you so much for joining in. We hope you have an amazing Easter day. If you want to give to the work of the Lord right here through the Grove Church, you can do that on the app or on our website. Thank you for your generosity, for everything that you've already given and done so that the ministry continues to move forward. Grove, everyone, have a happy Easter.